Righto, righto, pipe down, come on. This is a lightning talk, we haven't got much time. This is going to be very fast. I was told by Kim I could fit 30 minutes of content into 10 minutes, so let's do this. Uh, we deserve nice things and just because we work with Drupal uh, doesn't mean we can't have nice front-end things. Now it's easy to look at other frameworks and be envious, but a lot of the things they don't have we've had for years and it's tempting to look at the features and the development experience and say, I want those things. Um, but if you jump, you risk uh, taking away features that your editors love or things that we've solved for a long time. And developer experience shouldn't be the most important thing over everything else like complexity, performance, and maintenance. But it doesn't have to be this way. So the industry standard for uh, dri component-driven design is Storybook, and Vite is the go-to local development to tool uh, many of these modern frameworks are built on top of. So I'm here to tell you you can adopt these tools into your front-end workflow with Drupal, and in fact, I'm going to show you. In fact, these slides are built with these tools. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to give you the Nice Things Manifesto, if I can get my mouse back over there to click, and I can. So what we want are uh, hot module reloading, no more hitting reload, no more clearing cases to get our front-end development looking nice. We want painless CSS processing, so post-CSS or SAS if you're still using that. Painless JavaScript bundling, NPM installable stuff, component libraries and great front-end docs, a playground for designers to see how components interact, no duplication of markup between Drupal and the design system, and interaction, snapshot, and visual regression tests. And I just realized how small that font is. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's see if we can get this to go. Let's zoom in. So to get started, you need NPM. Uh, if you don't have NPM stood, eh, installed, you should get it. Use NVM if you can, so you can switch versions between your uh, different projects. For a new project, we're just going to use vanilla V, so create V, use at latest, follow the prompts. If you're using HTML or not using any other frameworks, just choose HTML. If you're using React, choose React. Then we're going to create our project, so you move into that, we run npm install, and we're going to add storybook, and so there's a command for that too, that's npx storybook init latest, uh, and we're saying type HTML for the rest of this project, but that could equally be React as well. And then this is pretty much the rest of this talk. npm install Vite plugin twig Drupal. Uh, this, yeah, that's it. Thank you. No. <laughs> yeah. So uh, then you have to configure Vite. And I'm getting used to the scroll over there. So this is the Vite config file. This is the same across all those frameworks I'm talking about. The main thing we're interested in here is we import the twig plugin and we configure it here. And we're going to come back to this, but let's just say we're telling twig and Vite that your design system lives in a source components folder inside your project, and that's what we're going to use for the rest of this talk. Then we have to configure Storybook, and I think the only thing you probably want to change in here is how to find the stories, and again, we're telling Storybook that they're in the source folder, the files that are named .story.js, etc., um, or they're an MDX file. There's a few add-ons there, but we won't really talk about those. Uh, and then the, probably the next thing you want to do is configure global CSS. So there's some CSS that would be in all your components, and you won't need to do that in every single component. So at the top of your preview.js, you import these CSS files. And yes, this is a JavaScript file, and yes, they are CSS files. And what happens under the hood is Vite transpiles that around, and you end up with a style tag, and it's got some JavaScript attached to it. So anytime you save any of these files, it knows to reload those parts only in the page. Yeah, so this is where a lot of the magic of Vite comes in. Uh, next, you want to start creating some stories. So this is just standard storybook. Nothing is this is Drupal specific, um, but we do have some twig in here. So we're going to create a folder called source components card. We're going with the card example, like Bryn said, cards are good for everything. We've got some markup here. This is our twig file. Uh, this, I'm not going to go into the detail here, but just note that there are some variables in here, like a teaser and a title. And then we document our story. So in here, we tell storybook about the fact that we have a card component. We have to export something called default. And in that, we have to export both the title, and that's how it shows up over here under card, uh, default. And we also have to have uh, the component. And the component itself is this variable called card. And you see at the top, we are importing card from a twig file. And this is JavaScript. What the plugin is doing under the hood is using twig.js to turn that twig markup into a JavaScript function that will accept variables and render that twig template. So down here, we tell it about our first story. We have a default story here, and we say these are the variables. And so Storybook under the hood, this is with Twig, but it does the same with every other framework like uh, React, Vue, and so forth, is it'll take those variables, 
put them with that component and render you a component. So what does that look like? Here's our card, it's our very rough starting point. And so we get documentation of our story and what it looks like. And we also get a show code button to say what the code looks like. And there's, as I said, this has been output from Twig. And I've lost my mouse, yep. So, big deal. Um, so this is where the hot module loader comes in. And if we take nothing away else away from this uh, presentation, just it's this. So I'm gonna collapse that off the side here and show you the card. So this is some CSS for that card that I prepared earlier. And if I make some changes here and press save, we watch over on the side there, as I'm working, it's rebuilding. Pause for applause. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically the idea behind this is you've got a Figma and you're working against the design and you want to you know, get it exactly right. And so you basically work through your stories. And I'm just going to uncomment the rest of these. And uh, you get it to the place that you're happy. But yeah, we're not hitting reload, we're not doing anything. And this is the same sort of developer experience that you see in these frameworks. Okay. Uh, I sh shouldn't have allowed for the fact that this was over my right shoulder. So yeah, once you've got that, the next thing you're probably going to want is some uh, CSS pre-processing. Is it gonna die me here? No, it's not. So V will automatically pick up a postcss.config.js file in your root, or it'll automatically transpile a .scss file into a CSS file for you. And it's just with that import statement. So you can import that .scss file directly into your card.js, your cardstories.js, and it'll, it'll just work. So as a proof of concept here, we've got some postcss config in the root of this repo. We're using uh, postcss import, which lets you import other CSS files. And we've got post-cs mix-ins, which let you do mix-ins. And I'm going to try to get this to work from the bottom here. So I'm going to, this was really easy when it was on the screen in front of me. And I'm going to put that up the top. So I'm going to import a mix-in from another file. Oh, that didn't work. And then I'm going to apply. Uh, so over here, when I'm on this image, uh, this little read more link is the only place you can click and we want our card to be fully clickable everywhere. So we've got a mix in that makes uh, a link cover the whole parent. So I just add that to my card link mm -mm. and save. And by the time I've moved my mouse over there, the whole card should be clickable and it is, yeah. <laughs> so again, big deal, right? And this is where the actual work comes in. It's the component driven design part. So there's another variant of our card that has a lot more text in it. And so we can just export another story and we have different variables in it. And we can start to document our different components and how they look. And so we can create an MDX file in the component folder and put our docs in it. And this is what we want for the next person that comes along to work on the project. They want to know how to use a card. So this is inception, but this slide is an MDX file with the code that's on this slide. Uh, so I've got an example of the default card and ugh, don't scroll on me. So I've got some guidance here on when I should use the default card. And then I've got a table here with the controls and this is just default storybook. So my designer can come in and say, yeah, have they done the job properly? What happens if I put a lot of text in here? Oh no, they haven't. So you can actually do that real world testing without having to get into the Drupal and make sure things are working. Uh, and then you can put another version of your card. And what does the markup for this page look like? It's just some uh, MDX. So MDX is a combination of React, uh, JSX, and Markdown. So we're importing some MDX components from Storybook, these blocks. We've got a meta that gives it a title so that it shows up over here in docs. Uh, uh, sorry, under cards. And then we can add things in here. So this we can add MDX files is what you will see above at the top here. We can add MDX files. Uh, it's Basically, we've got Markdown with a mix of JSX in it, which is a horrible concept, but it's, it's, it's a thing, right? <laughs> so we've got this canvas component, which rendered the card. Then we've got the controls that I was you know, putting the alternative thing in. And so you can envision that your documentation will start to you know, uh, elaborate, and you can have one of these for each of your, of your things. So you've got all this, and it's great. How do you actually start building this for production and using in Drupal? Well, Vite also has a build step. And so in your Vite config, you can put in how you want it to be built. And I've got some, just some simple examples here. It'll scroll, scroll. Um, so this bit here I've added. So I'm telling it that I want to output my files into libraries, nice things. And I want to uh, take in all of the entry points. And you can use whatever you like to compile the entry points. So I'm using FastGlob, which is an NPM package that will let you like find files in a, in a file system. And I'm saying, 
all JS and CSS files, but I don't want any tests or any storybook stuff or any stories. Put them into this library's nice things. So the step to compile this to production is I just run feet build. It spits out all these files for me, and then I can start using them in Drupal. So how do I do that? There's a lot of options for this. Um, you can use single directly components in core. You can use UI patterns and component blocks. You can use Pinto, which is a new emerging module from one of my colleagues, Dan, who I did see here. Uh, you can use theme hooks with bundle classes. Um, but the simplest form is to make use of twig namespaces and the components module. So if you remember this from earlier in our Vite config, we told Vite that your design system lived in source components. In your theme.info.yaml with the components module, you can say namespaces for Drupal, the your design system twig files live in path to your components. And that can be in the root of your repo. It doesn't need to be anywhere. It just has to be on the same file system as Drupal. And then inside your Drupal templates, you can just include stuff direct from your design system with the variables that go in the slots. And the, and the, sort of, the goal that you want to get to is there's as very little markup as possible in these so that your front-end developer can just work purely in Storybook and know that you know, what they change there is going to eventually flow through to Drupal. If you're not using SDC or Pinto, you'll have to wire up your libraries.yaml to point to those CSS and JavaScript files that we built in the last slide. And if you do want to see, make sure this is all working in Drupal, there's actually a Vite module, which takes a different approach. And it sort of hijacks this libraries.yaml and has hot module reloading of those as you're working in Drupal. So you can have um, it flow right through down to that layer if you like, if you don't have that separation between design system in Storybook and your actual um, Drupal site. So running two minutes, right. Interaction testing. So. You can add extra add-ons to Storybook because once you get into this ecosystem, there's a whole, you know, heaps of plugins you can add. And in your component stories, you can start writing interaction tests that make use of uh, the whole React testing library ecosystem. And uh, so you can put a play function on your component and say, these are things that I should expect to see. So for example, I created a very rudimentary collapsible sidebar in my Storybook here. And go away. So I've just got a button here that collapses over to the side. And wow, that's amazing. So in under <laughs> here and collapsed, I can actually document that interaction. And you saw it, it played it automatically. It closed it for me. Uh, if I go into the add-ons and I go into the interactions, it actually has these here and it runs them as tests. Um, I can step back and forward through them. And because of all the resolutions and stuff, I can't see where the resize is here, but I can step back to the start and I can run through the interactions and see, make sure that it's doing what it should. And then I, I can actually run this in CI and get my tests like this. So like with say Cypress and, and the like where you can actually have a visual representation of what your tests look like, you can do that in your storybook. Okay, wrapping up, we, this was a whirlwind tour. I've spoken at a rate of knots. Uh, there's a whole storybook ecosystem. Come and say hi in the corridor to discuss this. Talk to me on Slack about it. If I spoke too fast, you can watch it at 0.5 on YouTube. <laughs> I watch everything on two times, so it's on you, yeah. <laughs>